So we're here today to um, learn how to cook a restaurant quality dish at home. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah. So we're giving a few secrets away today. So we actually gonna show you how to cook a dish what you normally would see in a restaurant, which is healthy as well, to, to cook at home. Very simple. So we'll give you a few tips on that, how you can reproduce that at home, that it just looks as good as if you would go to some fine yeah. dining restaurant. Yeah. And you don't need lots of equipment, do you? No, it's all in the preparation, so yeah. you've got to be organised to get it happening. Um, and as you can see, you don't, it can all look very clean on the day when you put it together, yep. because most of it you, you do in advance. Yeah, fantastic. So um, you're using a method called sous vide. What, what's that all about? Well, as we know, there's so many different methods of cooking, and so you, you have the old traditional frying something in a frying pan, you have the, the boiling something in water, then you have the ones where you cure or marinate something in, in vinegars or oil or, or some spices, lemon juice, etc. And probably the more modern and healthy way is that you sous vide something, which means you cook something which you marinate first in, in uh, a sealed bag and then put it, uh, submerge it in, in like a water bath and cook it on a much lower temperature than you would normally cook a, a food item, but for a more extended time. So in the end, you, res you have a cooked product which um, all the proteins and all the good quality in a, in a product stays in, in high quality without that you had to cook it for hours right. or fry it down or roast it or anything like that. So, and it doesn't shrink? Doesn't shrink yeah. and, and, and as, as I said, it, it keeps the quality much yeah. higher. Yeah. And um, the, the main part is that um, you, you have, you cook it for a longer time yeah. because you're cooking at a lower temperature. Yeah, okay. So now you're using just, um, we, we're cooking, um, Ocean trout Ocean today. Trout today. Mm -hmm. And you've got it in plastic bags in, That's in the water here. These are just ordinary plastic bags that people can... Well, at, at work, obviously, we have cryback bags yep. because they're sealed. There's yep. no air in there, so we, we vacuum them. But yep. when you do it at home and you don't have this fancy little sous vide machine at, at home, you can uh, uh, take a sandwich bag yep. and uh, you marinate your, your fish, which we have on the recipe, and... Um, once you have it in there, you, you seal the, the little bag. Pushing out the air. Push out the air, yep. uh, twist it over, yep. put like a washing clip on or something yep. like this to, to hold it in place. Yep. Set your water temperature. Yep. We recommend, because you're doing it at home and you have a bit of an uncontrolled environment, do it about 70 degrees. We can do this on a lower temperature, but do it about 70 degrees, which means all you need just this little thermostat to put yep. in there, measure your water 70 yep. degrees, leave it in there for about an hour, yep. and you achieved exactly the same result as what we just did now. So you do this on top of the stove, can you do it in the oven? In a, in a large I would dish? say do it on top of the, on stove. Top of the stove. Yeah, okay. just leave the lid open, just yep. put the bags inside, yep. just try to keep the temperature even the and keep, whole time. And keep them submerged. And if it, and if it floats on the top yep. because you're doing it at home, you've got too much air in there, put some kind of little white on top of it just to push it under the water because really what you, you want to submerge it rather than have it floating on top of it. And, and um, you don't want to go opening the bag halfway through the process, Absolutely do you? Absolutely not. Yeah. And yeah. when you see the product, you, you feel a bit like, oh, is it cooked, is it cooked? Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and reality is, is uh, the first time you're probably going to be quite nervous about it. And when you open your bag, you, you uh, feel a bit apprehensive about it. But once you tried it, uh, you very quickly will know that that product has been cooked. It, it just means um, keep in mind that the temperature should be around 70 degrees at home. Yeah. Don't try anything below that. And For about an hour. Do it for about an hour. For one, for one piece. If you've got several pieces in several bags, it's still an hour. That's still yeah, an yeah. hour. It yeah, yeah, just fantastic. changes nothing yeah. as long yeah, as you keep, keep them all separate. Yeah. Do not try to do it as one large piece because once you do it as a large piece, then uh, obviously to get the temperature to the core of the product, yeah. it will take a lot longer. These are quite small pieces. Yep. We're using them as a starter today, yep. so um, they don't, they're not large. So do we want to pull one out and, and yeah, see what's left? Yeah, absolutely. And the idea is that the piece of fish is actually 
still one whole piece. It's not disintegrating in within the bag, is it? It's no. not falling apart? It's not falling apart. Yep. As you can see, we have the, the skin still on. We put a bit of uh, oil in there. We put a little bit of uh, flavours in there to, to make it nice and tasty. But it's all the flavours are now in the bag. Yeah? We haven't lost any of the quality of the product. We Not like when you... Um, fry something yep. in a pan or anything like this and you lose the cooking juices. We we got everything in here, yep. what you need for that dish. Fantastic. And now yeah. you could do, once you get your fish to the completed stage like this, mm -hmm. you can remove it and put it in the fridge for a, for a while before you do your dish? Yes, or is, yes. So you can serve it cold, you yes. can serve it warm. Yep. Um, so as leave it in the back. Yep. Uh, obviously, when you cook something and you want to keep it for a later stage, it's highly recommended you shill it down really fast. Yeah. So uh, an ice bucket with lots of ice in yeah. there. Uh, again, put it in there, shill it down as fast as you can. Uh, really, uh, you want to get that in, a, in about uh, two, two to three hours. You want to get it to about four degrees in your fridge. Otherwise, um, it's really not good because yep. it's it taking you too long. Okay, so what do we do from here? We pull it um, out of the water? So we're just going to talk yeah. about a few yeah. things, what yeah. we have done for for the dish today to make it uh, uh, quite interesting and exciting today. Uh, we just have some nice mixed lettuce which you can find in any uh, vegetable uh, supermarket or anything like yep. this, so that's quite straightforward. Um, we got a, a product here which is a, 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 a saffron mayonnaise. So this is um, uh, where, I don't know if you have seen saffron before. Saffron, we normally use the fine little seeds from, from uh, the flower yep. and and it is one of the rarest product in the world. It's it's more expensive than gold, yeah. but you use very little for, for it. And it's got that beautiful smell. Yeah. And to get yeah. that flavor out, we might pass that around. Yep, sure. To get that beautiful flavor out of this product, um, cook it with a tiny little bit of white wine and you will you will find all that that beautiful flavor comes out of it. So, and, and, the, and the wine and it, will turn slightly sort of... It will yeah, yeah. turn really golden. Yep. Shill that down and then just add it to a good quality mayonnaise. And so, that's basically what this product ends up in the end. So will the, will, so when you do that with the, water, the wine, the saffron will dissolve? Or? No, it's probably good to take the seeds out. Right. But, you know, sometimes because you're using a, a high quality product, you might want that in there, yeah. uh, you know, to, to really show the off. Flex through it the flex mayonnaise. through it a yep. little bit. So yep. there, there's several ways to do yep. it. So... That's one item. The other one is what we did here. We just used a very high quality avocado. We didn't let it get brown, so we just uh, uh, just peeled the avocado, taken the flesh off. We added some some little bit of sour cream to it. We yeah. added a little bit of lemon juice to it, just as a mousse base, just all mixed it up nicely. And it gives you that lovely green color and that nice green touch on that one. And the final one on that one is, which we did today, um, we put it in here. It's some beetroot gel. And to make a beetroot gel, uh, it's, again, it's quite straightforward, but uh, it, when you get it on a plate, it looks really complicated. So just take a normal beetroot, cook your beetroot, don't peel it beforehand. Cook it quite a long time so your beetroot is quite soft by the time you're finished with the beetroot. Then peel your beetroot, mash up your beetroot, put it to a strainer so you got like a, as fine as you can get it, probably in a mixer that you get a nice mousse and stuff like this in there. And then thicken it with a little bit of agar agar if you like it uh, vegetarian or a bit of gelatin if you want to make yeah. it, you know, because we know gelatin yeah. pork products or you might want to use agar agar as, instead. So Would you use, I noticed in the recipes you've got two, you use leaf gelatin at one stage and, and powdered gelatin. Yes. There's a reason for, for doing one or other? Um, it's the application. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier to apply yep. a, a powder version of it, yep. and sometimes yeah. you, you have that opportunity to dissolve. soak it and, yeah. and then yeah. put it together. And, so and you soak it, soak it, pull it up, squeeze it, correct. and then add that to your liquid. Absolutely yeah, that's right. right. Yes. So, so that's the ingredients, what we use. And then uh, another ingredient we used, which will impress everybody at home, which is actually so simple, it looks a bit like burnt bread, but what we did is we, we went to a good supermarket or a good bakery. Uh, you find many in town that do this charcoal bread, which is colored with squid in color, the bread. And you cut it really fine, as, you know, nice and thin, and then put your oven on, on a low temperature overnight and let it dry out, that it gets quite hard and crunchy. 
And then in the end, you end up with these nice little shards of, of uh, squid in bread in the end, which then again, you can break up in a, in a future if they're too big, or you leave them as a whole if you, if you want to use it. So where, where would you get that? You said bakeries. Bakeries. It, 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 so not, not Baker's Delight? Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> but if you go in town, I think Laurent would be one of them in town right. uh, who would have it. Uh, you probably find Mitchell will have some of this product. You probably, if you, even if you go to Maya or, yep. or David Jones in their food court, you would find that there. You only need a small little amount yep. uh, because it adds up very quickly to, to a lot of, and we are not making like a big sandwich out of it. Yeah, We're just yeah. using fine, fine little charts yeah, for it fantastic. and stuff like that. We did a little bit of garnish here, which is a, a bit of angel hair, which is um, chili or capsicum, really finely chopped again and then dried. And again, that, that just adds a little bit more to the complexity of the dish and makes it really exciting in the end. So to show you how simple it is to put this dish together, I'm actually quite happy if someone wants to give me a hand here and we, we put it together. Hmm? Come on, Jim, you come up here and do it. Jim. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so we, we might make two. I make one and you make one, so we can show everybody how simple it is. We, we use, again, um, you can, the plate, various plates, whatever you feel like, it's, it's nice for the purpose of what you want to use and stuff like this. We'll put some gloves on because we want you all to try it, so we want to make sure you all have the gloves on. So glad you wore blue. It all goes together, you see? Look at that. A bit small. A bit small? Yeah, giving us quite small gloves, didn't they? I think they're going to get us a bit larger gloves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the first part, uh, Jim, what we want to do is Pick a few of that lettuce, not many, maybe six, and just line them up in the centre or a bit on an angle. Use your imagination, whatever you think is the, it's the nicest way. Use some nice and fancy ones. Don't use the real big pieces. And again, you can do whatever you like in terms of your... Um what, the, the lettuce combinations you have, you can also, you can put other things in your, in yeah, your correct. salad as well, Absolutely, you? And, it, and if you want to just use bean shoots or bean sprouts yeah. or, or you want carrots, to use... Shaved uh, carrots. Shaved carrots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. the possibilities are endless. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of possibilities, is, does the sous vide work for things like chicken and beef as well? It does, yeah. yes. Um, again, if you cook it at 70 degrees, you're probably safe on that one. Yeah. I would probably give it a bit of colour yeah. and maybe seal it off a little bit beforehand yeah. just to give it a bit of colour. Yeah. So, Jim, what I'm going to do is, because I said about six or seven, I'm just going to reduce that a little bit instead of having quite as many what we have here because it's only an entree and it's not a salad, it's just a garnish. Um, okay. So let's look at it that way, put it all together. So, and the next part is we're gonna use the ocean trout. So this is our centerpiece of food, so it should be the largest item. So the measure of hand is if your, if your lettuce are bigger than the ocean trout, yeah. then that's probably too large. So we put that in the center of this one. And again, you might want to do that. You can show that how simple it is. Can you, uh, can you overcook the salmon in the sous vide? Oh, uh, well, you, 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 it will get more white in colour and yeah. it probably gets a little, it's, it's not as tender, quite as tender to eat yeah, if you okay. cook it too long, but yep. it, it's, it's still edible. Yeah. So, so if you've done it the night before and you put it in the fridge mm -hmm. and, and you want to serve it warm, can you put the bags back in hot water again to yes, reheat them? Yes, you can, but you've got to make sure you're, you're shielded um, properly yeah. 
when you when, when you, you have the cold it, factor. Yes, and if you want to reuse it. So the next part is, and we've got some little spoons here, yeah? So what I'd like you to do is use our little color thing here, like a bit like a color book, yeah? And we take our spoon and we put it in here and we just uh, put a few little dots, maybe two or three on a bit around to make it a bit interesting. Yeah, not too big, not too large, just a few tiny little dots. Yeah? yeah? Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we do the same with the avocado. Yeah, but we're gonna do the opposite way from what we did before. So now we just um, go. Placed in the opposite way, yeah? And finally... There's a cloth there if yeah, you want to wipe your hands. There's a cloth if you want to wipe your hands, yeah? So we'll go and now squeeze a little bit of the beetroot in a few more of the gaps which we have around. Yeah, perfect. So the next part is we want a bit of excitement here. So we'll break up a little bit of that beetroot, uh, the, the shards, and we'll just move them along. You could, could you crumble that up and just yeah. sprinkle you it could, on, over exactly. the whole dish? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Just a bit of salt for the fish. Is there any salt in it already? If it's a little bit in the bag. We don't put much in no, there, okay. so we we'll just give you that little, and then uh, we've got that little bit of angel hair which we're gonna put there. Here you go. Is that saffron? No, 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 no. that's uh, capsicum. Capsicum, it's, it's um, very finely um, sliced and dried. Um, it's something that um, Andreas buys commercially, but you, if you want it to be really you at home, it. you can do your own. I, I think something like some um, preserved pickled ginger, pink ginger would be quite yeah. nice as an alternative Here on top go. of that as well. Just put a bit of the... Yeah, so we're gonna just finish it off with a bit of pepper. And um, we just to give it a bit of color and glazing when you get it out, a bit of just plain olive oil on the top of it, not much of it. And uh, you end up with a restaurant dish like you get anywhere in a, in a beautiful restaurant. Yeah. And Jim just demonstrated that he can do it just as good. Yeah. Not as good. <laughs> <laughs> nearly as good, nearly as good. Well done.